Today's video is going to be what I'm calling Thrifty Tingles. In a recent update video, I told you guys that I wanted to try a sort of hybrid of the Thrifty Thursday concept um, and a regular roleplay uh, because that was something that I just wanted to do a bit more of because you guys seem to all really love role plays. However, when I put that video out, the update video, I received an overwhelming uh, response from so many of you who didn't want me to do away completely with the Thrifty Thursday listened to you guys and decided to try something different from what I originally intended. So what I'm going to try now as a sort of compromise is to do um, a thrifty Thursday type video um, and alternate that with a role play, just a regular so last week, you guys saw the uh, phrenology roleplay, and this week, I'm going to just do a regular uh, thrifty video, and I'm calling it Thrifty Tingles, because it's obviously not Thursday. Now, it's been a while since I've done a Thrifty Tingles video, and I know that some of you are new to my channel and uh, may have never seen one. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Thrifty Tingles, it is a uh, series of videos where I visit a local thrift store in search of tingly items to share with you. Now there are three basic rules that I have to follow. Rule number one, I cannot spend over five dollars. Rule number two, the item or items that I purchase have to be not only tingle worthy, but also useful to me in my own life. And rule number three, each time I visit the thrift store, I have to donate an item of mine, something that I'm not using, but could be of benefit to somebody else. Um, now there is a little bit of traffic background noise right now that I apologize for, and I hope that it is not too disturbing to you. However, uh, I have a solution to that problem that I'll be implementing very soon. So I've got my binaural microphone here today. So as I show you my thrifty tingles items, I'll also be doing a little bit of ear to ear whispering and soft speech. So I hope that you enjoy. So, on this trip to the thrift store, the items that I donated were uh, some old baby clothes that used to belong to my son that he doesn't fit into anymore. And also some baby books that he's too old for now. And I found two items that I'm really excited to share with you, because I think they're very cool. So the first item that I found you 
little bit more about. And the other item that I have is this Chinese abacus. And I was very excited to see this at the thrift store. My little boy is just about at that right age where he's beginning to show an interest in um, numbers and counting. And this is a very ancient tool, but I think it's still a great thing for a kid to have as they're, uh, as they're learning. Show you this in more detail as well. Okay, so I want to tell you about this neat candle. Uh, before finding it at at the store, I had never seen anything quite. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that I quite like candles. So I love the look of this, but I thought there was more to it than just looking cool, so I looked it up. And this is kind of a used version. known as a product that's known as um, Candle by the Hour. And the way it works is really interesting. And it's actually super useful. As well as looking really you're looking at here is one really long coil of beeswax. And beeswax is you kind of inside of it too. If you can see that. It goes down uh, all the way down. And this is a clamp that opens and closes. The reason that it's called Candle by the Hour is that based on how much of the coil you decide to pull through the clamp, you can determine how long. So the way
way it works is that for each inch of the candle that you have up through the clamp, you'll get 20 minutes. This is more or less an inch. So this is good for about 20 minutes. If you want a full hour, you would just pull up three inches. Well, two inches from here. But you would have a three inch section. And as it burns down, as a sort of safety feature because of that. So if you leave the room or leave your house and forget to blow out the candle, it will extinguish itself as soon as it burns down. design is one of at least two designs that they have. There might be more, but there's another design that is not vertical like this, but it's horizontal. And I saw it online. sort of light I really like just the way it looks because it looks kind of steampunky to me. I don't know if it's meant to look like that or not, but that's just kind of the look it has. I really like.
good size flame. And it gives off a decent amount of light. I really like the sound of the flame when it kind of blow it out. of experimenting to see if this is a good trigger for anybody. But I'm enjoying Now I'm going to switch shots, and I'm going to show you my new, well, my son's new abacus, and I thought I would um, give it a little detailing, because it's pretty dusty. to do is have the uh, can 
candle here burning while I showed this to you, but unfortunately I couldn't fit it in the shot because I really wanted to have a nice close shot. cleaning on some of the beads and in the corners because this has been sitting in a thrift store so it's been it's been collecting dust for I don't know how long so I've dampened some Q-tips There have been many uh, different historical accounts of abacus-like tools being used for many hundreds of years in lots of different parts of the world. They all sort of resemble one another, but they're not identical. The Chinese abacus is, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's pretty similar to the uh, Roman version. And it's also really similar to Japanese counterpart. The main difference is that in the Japanese version, this upper deck has only one bead instead of two, and the lower deck has four instead of Beads on top are, I believe, known as the heavenly beads. And the beads on the bottom deck, these, are known as earthly beads. kind of how, how much dust is collected on this. Clean cute. The beads themselves have a lot of dust on them too, so I'm going to clean those as well. that uses an abacus is known as um, I don't know the perfect pronunciation but it's either abacus or an abacist and they are still used today and they're being taught in schools in different parts of the world I was never taught in school how to use one, but I did 
learn. Just on my own. Through my own research, how to do a just a pretty basic um, addition. And if you think of it like a calculator, just like a digital calculator, then it kind of helps to get your mind around all the beats. But it's really fascinating, and you can do very advanced. using an abacus. I don't know how to. So you won't be learning that from me today, but I can show you how to do just some simple addition. another green one. So there are a couple of things that you need to know about how the abacus works before you can use it properly. The first thing you need to know is the value of the beads. In the upper deck, the beads are worth five. So one bead is worth five. In the lower deck, one bead is worth one. As you are doing your calculations, the value of the beads is only counted if it is pushed towards the center. It's away from the center, and it's not counted. So I'm just going to show you a basic addition problem and solve it on the abacus for you. So, as an example, Let's say that I have 1,234 dollars and 56 cents. So the way that we would show that on the abacus is from left to right. Um, and it helps to sort of think about it like a digital calculator. And I'll show you what I mean. You'll start here with 1,000, so there's your 1, 200, so there's your 2, 30, 4 dollars, so here's your 3 and your 4, and 56 cents. Now remember that beads are worth five. And you may be thinking that we could just, since there are five beads, we could just push five beads towards the center. However, as I mentioned, the 
bottom row and the top row of the beads on this abacus are not really um, used for problems like this. I couldn't tell you exactly what their function is because I don't fully understand it, but I think that those are in place for especially um, hexadecimal calculations. So we just sort of pretend for this purpose that these beads down here and these don't exist. So to mark the number five, we'll use one of our heavenly beads. And then for six, I'm sure you can guess this. You'll start with five and add one. And this is six. So we have one thousand two hundred thirty four dollars and fifty six cents. Now let's say that I want to add one thousand one hundred eleven dollars and eleven cents. So it's once across the board. This will not be typical. So here we go. One thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and eleven. So now to solve the equation, all we have to do is read the abacus. So, we have 2, 3, 4, oops, I actually made a mistake. When we added 1, we actually should have just taken away 4. And added five because we don't use these bottom ones. So anyway, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the answer to our equation is two thousand three hundred forty-five dollars and sixty. Seven cents. And that's it. It's a very basic equation using the abacus. So You know uh, the very, very, very basic uh, first steps to using an abacus to do calculations. Something that looks so uh, foreign to to us with our written numerical system it can do such uh, complex calculating. Really fascinating.
brought this home. I showed it to my little boy. And I told him that it's called an abacus. And I asked him to say it back to me. But he could only say, Okay, guys. Well, I very much hope that you have enjoyed this thrifty tingles. First one of 2014. Interesting and relaxing. And I want to wish you all a restful night's sleep. Pleasant dreams. And I'll be seeing you again very soon. Honey lemon sugar scrub. That has a few more ingredients than the first one, but it smells amazing. And I have personally used both of these before, and I really love the way they make my skin feel.